Welcome back, listeners, to another enlightening episode of the Pivot Pathways podcast. I'm your host, and today we're diving deep into a topic that's at the very core of personal development, how to truly know yourself. Buckle up, because we're about to embark on a journey of self-discovery that could change the way you see yourself and the world around you. Picture this. You're standing in front of a mirror, staring at your reflection. You see your face, your eyes, your physical features. But do you really know the person looking back at you? Many of us walk through life feeling like we've got it all figured out. We can recite our resumes, list our accomplishments, and share anecdotes from our past. But when it comes to truly understanding who we are at our core, we often find ourselves at a loss. It's a peculiar paradox, isn't it? We spend every waking moment with ourselves, yet somehow we can feel like strangers in our own skin. This disconnect isn't just a minor inconvenience. It's a fundamental wound that can hold us back from reaching our full potential and experiencing true fulfillment. Now you might be thinking, come on, I know who I am, but let's dig a little deeper. When was the last time you questioned your own values or judgments? How often do you find yourself swayed by the opinions of others, whether they're singing your praises or tearing you down? If you're honest with yourself, you might realize that your sense of self-worth is more fragile than you'd like to admit. This instability in our self-image leaves us vulnerable to the whims of public opinion. We become chameleons, changing our colors to blend in with whatever environment we find ourselves in. We laugh at jokes that don't really tickle our funny bone, we jump on bandwagons without really understanding why, and we chase after goals that society deems worthy even if they don't align with our true passions. It's exhausting, isn't it? Always checking the weather vane of public opinion to decide how we should feel or what we should value. But here's the kicker. It doesn't have to be this way. We can learn to know ourselves, to build a stable identity that acts as our North Star, guiding us through life's ups and downs. Now before you start beating yourself up for not having this all figured out already, let me tell you something important. No one is born with an innate ability to know themselves. That's right, even the most self-assured person you know had to learn this skill. And it all starts in our early years. Think back to your childhood. If you were lucky, you had someone in your life, a parent, a caregiver, a mentor, who took the time to really see you. They didn't just look at you. They studied you with fairness, attention, and kindness. They reflected back to you what they saw, helping you understand your emotions, your reactions, your quirks. It's like they were painting a portrait of you and then handing you the brush to continue the work. This process of being truly seen and understood is the foundation of a strong sense of self. It's through these interactions that we learn to validate our own feelings and experiences. Imagine a parent saying to their child, it's okay not to feel happy on your birthday. In that simple statement, they're teaching the child that it's all right to have complex emotions, that there's no one right way to feel. But here's the thing, not everyone gets this ideal start in life. Maybe your parents were too busy or distracted to really see you. Maybe they projected their own hopes and fears onto you, giving you a distorted mirror to look into. Or perhaps they were overly critical, leaving you with a punitive inner voice that's always ready to point out your flaws. If any of this sounds familiar, don't worry. The good news is, is that it's never too late to start this process of self-discovery. Just like you can build muscle at any age, you can also strengthen your sense of self at any point in your life. But how do we do this? Well, one powerful way is to seek out the help of a wise and compassionate person who can do for us what an ideal parent might have done. This could be a therapist, a coach, or even a very insightful friend. The key is to find someone who can study us closely, mirror back what they see, and validate our experiences. Through their eyes, we can start to see ourselves more clearly. We can learn to pay attention to our true feelings, to take our own desires seriously. It's like having a skilled photographer capture your essence in a way that you've never seen before. Suddenly, you're looking at a portrait of yourself that feels more real and authentic than any selfie you've ever taken. But this process isn't just about feeling good about ourselves. It's about building resilience. 
when we have a strong sense of who we are, we're less likely to be knocked off balance by criticism or praise. We can take compliments without letting them go to our heads, and we can face criticism without it crushing our spirits. Imagine being able to stand firm in your beliefs, even when they're unpopular. Picture yourself pursuing your passions, even if they don't fit the mold of what society deems successful. That's the power of truly knowing yourself. Now, I can almost hear some of you thinking, this all sounds great, but how do I actually do this in my day-to-day -day life? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's break it down into some practical steps. First, start paying attention to your inner world. Notice your thoughts, your feelings, your reactions. Don't judge them, just observe. It's like you're a scientist studying the most fascinating subject in the world, you. This might feel a bit awkward at first, almost like you're eavesdropping on yourself, but stick with it. You might be surprised by what you discover. For example, you might notice that every time you're about to try something new, a little voice in your head says, you're going to fail. Where did that voice come from? Is it really yours or is it an echo of someone else's doubts? By noticing these patterns, you can start to question them and eventually change them. Next, start questioning your assumptions about yourself. Where did these ideas come from? Are they really true or are they just stories you've been telling yourself? This can be uncomfortable, but it's also incredibly liberating. Maybe you've always thought of yourself as bad at math, but is that really true? Or did you just have a tough time in one math class and decided that defined you forever? These self-imposed labels can be incredibly limiting. By questioning them, you open up a world of possibilities. Maybe you're not bad at math. Maybe you just learn differently and need a different approach. By challenging these assumptions, you give yourself permission to grow and change. Then, practice self-compassion. Treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would offer a good friend. Remember, you're human, and humans are beautifully imperfect. This doesn't mean excusing bad behavior or not striving to improve. It means acknowledging that mistakes and setbacks are part of the journey, not roadblocks that define you. Imagine you're working on a big project and you miss a deadline. The old you might have spiraled into self-criticism. I'm so irresponsible, I'll never succeed. But with self-compassion, you might say, this is disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. What can I learn from this to do better next time? It's a subtle shift, but it can make a world of difference in how you navigate challenges. Finally, seek out experiences that challenge you and push you out of your comfort zone. It's in these moments of discomfort that we often learn the most about ourselves. This doesn't mean you need to go bungee jumping if you're afraid of heights, unless you want to, of course. It could be as simple as striking up a conversation with a stranger if you're usually shy, or trying a new hobby that you've always been curious about but never dared to try. These new experiences give you fresh data points about who you are. Maybe you'll discover a hidden talent, or realize that something you thought you'd hate is actually enjoyable. Or maybe you'll confirm that yes, you really don't like that thing, and that's valuable information too. Now I want to be clear, this journey of self-discovery isn't always easy. There will be times when you feel lost, confused, or discouraged. You might uncover aspects of yourself that you're not entirely comfortable with. You might realize that some of your long-held beliefs about yourself are actually holding you back. This can be scary, and it's okay to feel that way, but I promise you, it's worth it. Because when you truly know yourself, you have the power to shape your life in a way that aligns with your deepest values and desires. You'll find yourself making decisions with more confidence, building relationships that are more authentic, and pursuing goals that truly matter to you. You'll be less swayed by the opinions of others and more in tune with your own inner wisdom. And here's the beautiful thing. As you get to know yourself better, you'll also develop a greater capacity for understanding and empathizing with others. You'll recognize that everyone is on their own journey of self-discovery, facing their own challenges and insecurities. This can lead to more compassionate interactions and deeper connections with the people around you. Let me share a personal anecdote to illustrate this point. A few years ago, I thought I knew exactly who I was 
a driven professional who valued success above all else. I worked long hours, rarely took time off, and measured my worth by my achievements. But when I started this self-discovery journey, I realized that this identity was largely shaped by external expectations and a fear of failure. As I dug deeper, I discovered that what I truly valued was creativity, connection, and making a positive impact on others. This realization was both terrifying and liberating. It meant reevaluating my career choices and lifestyle. It wasn't easy, and there were moments of doubt and uncertainty, but as I aligned my life more closely with my true self, something amazing happened. I felt more fulfilled, more energized, and ironically, more successful. Not by external measures, but by my own standards of what makes a life well lived. And my relationships improved too, because I was showing up as my authentic self, not the persona I thought I needed to be. Now, you might be thinking, that's great for you, but my situation is different. And you're right, your journey will be unique to you. But the principles are the same. By taking the time to truly know yourself, you open up possibilities you might never have imagined. So, how do you start this journey? Well, there are many tools and techniques you can use. Journaling is a powerful way to explore your thoughts and feelings. Meditation can help you quiet the external noise and tune into your inner voice. Talking with a therapist or coach can provide valuable insights and guidance. You might also find it helpful to take personality assessments or strength finder tests. While these shouldn't be treated as definitive labels, they can provide interesting starting points for self-reflection. Just remember, you're not trying to fit yourself into a predefined box. You're exploring the unique combination of traits, experiences, and values that make you who you are. Another powerful technique is to regularly ask yourself reflective questions. For example, what energizes me? What drains me? What are my core values, and am I living in alignment with them? What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? What stories am I telling myself about who I am and are they serving me? Take time to ponder these questions. Write down your answers, revisit them regularly, and notice how they might change over time. It's also important to pay attention to your body. Our physical sensations can often provide clues about our emotional state that our conscious mind might miss. Do you feel a tightness in your chest when you're about to do something? That might be anxiety. Do you feel a flutter of excitement in your stomach? That might be passion or enthusiasm. Learning to recognize and interpret these physical cues can be a valuable part of self-knowledge. Remember, knowing yourself isn't a destination. It's a lifelong journey. There will always be new depths to explore, new aspects of yourself to uncover. But with each step you take, you'll find yourself standing a little taller, feeling a little more grounded, and living a life that's a little more true to who you really are. As you embark on this journey, be patient with yourself. Change doesn't happen overnight. You might have moments of clarity followed by periods of confusion. That's normal. The important thing is to keep moving forward, to keep asking questions, to keep exploring. And don't forget to celebrate your progress along the way. Each new insight, each moment of self-awareness is a victory worth acknowledging. Maybe you recognized a pattern in your behavior and chose to respond differently. Maybe you stood up for yourself in a situation where you would have previously stayed silent. These might seem like small things, but they're powerful steps towards living a more authentic life. As we wrap up this episode, I want to leave you with this thought. You are the author of your own story. By getting to know yourself truly and deeply, you're picking up the pen and taking control of the narrative. So write a story that excites you, that challenges you, that makes you proud. Your story doesn't have to look like anyone else's. It doesn't have to follow a predetermined plot. It can be full of plot twists and unexpected adventures. It can be a story of growth, of resilience, of transformation. And the best part, you get to decide how it unfolds. So my dear listeners, I challenge you to embark on this journey of self-discovery. Start today. Take a moment to sit quietly and ask yourself, who am I really? Listen to the answer without judgment. Be curious about what you find, and then take one small step towards living in alignment with that truth. Remember, this journey isn't about becoming a perfect version of yourself. It's about becoming more fully you, with all your quirks, 
your strengths, your challenges, and your unique perspective on the world. It's about embracing all parts of yourself and integrating them into a whole that is uniquely, beautifully you. As you go forward from this episode, I encourage you to keep this conversation going. Talk with friends about what you're discovering about yourself. Share your insights and listen to theirs. Create a community of people who are also on this journey of self-discovery. Because while this is a deeply personal journey, it's not one you have to take alone. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of self-discovery. Until next time, keep pivoting, keep growing, and keep getting to know the amazing person that you are. This is the Pivot Pathways Podcast, signing off. Remember, the most important relationship you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. Make it a good one.